Okay, so now let's do our data analysis. We have our T initial from our graph, our T final from our graph, and the mean temperature from our graph. And we have the data right here for the standardization of benzoic acid. You should have different numbers, so just follow along. Uh, I'll use numbers that I have on my uh, spreadsheet here. So what's the mass of my sample? My sample is 0 0.9026 gram. So I'm gonna enter that here. Are you using your sample? Use, my, use yours. If you want, you can use mine first to verify that your formulas are correct. And then you can change it later to your data, okay? That might be a good way just so you know you're doing it right. So my number here is 0 0.9026. What's the known delta U for the combustion of the sample? Must this, this must be a negative number. Do you have a picture of that benzoic acid standard that we have used in the lab last time? It tells you how many calories or how many kilojoules. It should be a joules per gram value. Six three one eight calories yeah. per gram. Uh, per gram yeah. Okay, so I have to change that to joule. So six three equals six three one eight. What's a what's a calorie? Four point one eight four, right? Joules per calorie. So twenty six thousand four hundred thirty four joules per gram. Now that's the heat that's released, so delta U in this case must be negative, right? So I have to have a negative there in front of that number. Right? 6318, that's only four six six. So I really shouldn't be showing that many six six here. Okay, minus 26,435. So what's the Q for the sample? Q for the sample would be one. My sample is this many grams. Delta U of my sample is this per gram. So what would be my Q for, well, how much heat would be released by burning my sample? Uh, mass, times mass times the heat per gram, right? Grams times the joules per gram. So that would be the Q of my, oops, what did I just do? Yeah, that is the correct one, right? It's almost the same because it's almost a gram. I have almost a gram here. This one times this one. Yeah. Okay. Now, how much wire did I burn? I go back here. My wire was 0 0.0247 before. That's the mass of the wire. And 0 0.0180 after. Okay. So in the simulation, they weighed the wire before and after. Uh, in in the lab, what we in practice, what we actually do is we just measure the length of the wire before and after, and there's a value of calories per length. Remember the, the wire that you had in the lab, 2.3 calories per centimeter. But since in this simulation, we're given the mass before and after for the fused wire, we're going to use that. So 0 0.0247 minus 0 0.0180. So I'm going to put that here. Okay, so this is my y, 0 0.0247 and minus one, 0 0.0180. You have to have your own number here. Oh yeah, this, is, this one says kilojoules, so what should I do? Divide by 1,000, right? Okay, so minus, and I just need to put more six bigs there. Five, six, eight, okay? 
Thank you. I specified kilojoule here. Okay. Mass of the wire burn. Okay, my Y is given to four, six, eight, four decimal places, so 0 0.0067. What's the known delta U for the combustion of the wire? What is it? Do you have that in your pictures from last time, in the fuse wire? It tells you how many calories per gram. One thousand four hundred calories per gram. So, if it's one thousand four hundred, and should be negative, right? It's exothermic. You're burning it, so it equals negative one thousand four hundred calories per gram times four point one eight four joules per gram. Fifty eight, fifty eight. Okay. I'm just rounding that. Uh, I'll leave that out to 466. Actually showing only 466. I'm not actually doing any rounding. So it's minus 5858. So that's, so these are known. The delta delta U for the burning of the wire, the delta per gram, the delta U for the burning of benzoic acid per gram. So what's Q for my wire then? How much heat did my, the burning of the wire release in this experiment? Mass of the wire times the delta U per gram, right? So this is going to be equal to mass times the known delta U. That's in joules. So if I want it in kilojoules, divide by a thousand. Okay. Uh, for two sig figs, because this has only two sig figs, keep an extra one. It doesn't really matter if how you show uh, it's um, you can show an extra one here, but we're actually not rounding off anything in here anyway. So, so it's minus point zero three. That's a standard that's known for the remember you weren't you the one who called that call it out for me? 1400 calories per gram. Oh, I was just wondering if I converted it to joules. Oh, okay. Okay, so you can see of the total heat released by the sample and the wire, compare the wire and the sample. That's a small correction from the wire, right? 0 0.04 versus 23.86. So most of the heat that's released by the reaction is from the wire, as expected. Okay, I mean from the sample, not from the wire. What's my measure delta T? You need to go back to your standard run over here. What's my delta T over here? My delta T, let me write my delta T over here. Delta T is T final minus T initial. So my delta T is equal to T final minus T initial. It's 2.11, okay? So I'm gonna put that over here, 2.11. If you want, you can reference that cell in your standard run. So I click here and then click on that 2.11 that I have here. And so that will, I'll, highlight that to remind myself that that's actually a formula from another that picks up number a number from another sheet right here okay 2.11 it's t final minus t initial so you got your delta t All right so what's the purpose of the standard run you want to determine the calorimeter constant c so let's go back to our handout for the bond colorimetry. Okay. All right. 
Here's your equa basic equation for your color bomb calorimetry. Q, the amount of heat released by the sample plus the amount of heat released by the wire, okay? That's gonna be equal to minus the heat capacity of the calorimeter and its constant content. That's called the calorimeter constant times the negative of the delta T. So in other words, if you wanted to reverse the delta T, so minus delta T, then multiply that by the heat capacity of the calorimeter and its content constants that should equate to the total heat. So how do I solve for C? Minus Q total divided by delta T, right? So if I want C, I just take Q total divided by the negative right here of delta T. So the formula would be minus Bigger. Minus Q total, so minus Q sample plus Q wire. You don't have to if you start with a minus. Okay, it will assume that you're entering a formula. So equals minus Q sample plus Q wire divided by delta T. And that is the heat capacity of your calorimeter and its content. Okay, 11 kilojoules per Kelvin. Note all our units are in kilojoules here for the Q. So that's kilojoules per Kelvin. Are you using different numbers? You're not using my numbers. If you wanna use my numbers, that's fine. And then you can just change it to your numbers. So this was 2.11, right? Yes. Both. Yeah, you just did a standard run right now. Because I just walked you through how to do it for the standard run because you have to do it again yourself for the unknown run. That's fine. Just use my data for now. Yes. Like I said, uh, for now, just use my data. That way you're sure that your formulas are correct. And then you analyze your graphs, you replace my data with your data. Okay, so that's how you get your calorimeter constant. I'm going to stop this one so we can start a new recording for the unknown run.